Hello everyone, welcome to another exciting episode of Day Spring Discussions, the show where we talk about movies, TV, sci-fi, fantasy, comic books. Basically, if you geek out about it, we're going to talk about it. I am your host, Sean McGahee, and with me again today on this lovely Monday afternoon is Lisa Locke McGahee. Lisa, say hello to all the lovely people listening. Hello, everybody. All right, guys, so if you're just a uh, newbie to this show, this is the, where we talk about a few things that go on last week in the world of geekdom. We're going to talk about it, discuss it, give our opinions, and of course, you're always welcome to chime back on social media or via email at dayspringdiscussions at gmail.com. So originally when I was writing up this week's show notes, I thought it was pretty short. I thought we were going to have a very short show. And then last night happened. Uh, A couple trailers dropped uh, that we just had to talk about. And then there's some more trailers dropped this morning, uh, which I didn't have quite time to prepare for. So I'll have to get to those next week. But uh, I'm really looking forward to the Game of Thrones trailer that I just watched a little bit ago. And maybe I'll have Josh on for that. Yeah, see, I'm not going to discuss that uh, we'll, one we'll, we'll see if I can get Josh back to actually show up for once. And then he and I can discuss <coughs> that, I think. Uh, but I think something Lisa will definitely want to chime in on is the new Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them trailer. That uh, dropped last night right before Lisa and I went to bed. Uh, we watched it on my little phone, and then we watched it just a few minutes ago as well. So this is, of course, being the spinoff to the Harry Potter, written by J.K. Rowling takes place many years before Harry Potter was even born. You have Eddie Redman playing Newt Scamander, is that correct? I'm not really sure how you're supposed to say it. Scamander, Scamander, I think it's Scamander. Something like that. So yeah, he arrives in New York and we get another side of the Wizarding World uh, that we didn't see in the original Harry Potter films. The American side. The American side, exactly. Um, so this would be like kind of the third trailer, but really I feel like it's the first, it's the first real official trailer. trailer. Yeah. Like I feel like the other ones were just teases, so this one really gives us, we still have no idea kind of what the story is, mm-hmm. but this gives us more insight to it, it shows us a little bit of the wizarding part of it all. Lisa, what do you think? Well, I think the trailer looked awesome. You know, so there's the thing, since they announced this movie, I've been a little confused because, you know, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them is a textbook mm-hmm. in the original Harry Potter you know, verse, mm-hmm. and uh, the Newt Scamander is the author of that book. Mm-hmm. So when I heard that they were making a film based off of that, I was really confused because that book is a tiny little, it's a, it's a tiny little like spinoff book, and mm-hmm. it's just about animals, like about yeah. Fantastic Beasts. So I was really confused how they were going to make this into a film. So, you know, up until this point, I haven't really been overly excited about it. Because I, I think just because I didn't really understand... How they were going to expand what, on it. What they were going to do. And the, and the trailers we've gotten so far have been, like, super teasy. Yeah. Like, they just show you a character in an old time. Like, yeah, they, they didn't a, really tell you anything at all about what was going on. Yeah, this is the most they've given us so far. Right, so really up till now, all you've known is that they have a good cast. Mm-hmm. And that it was written by J.K. Rowling. Mm-hmm. Now, granted, those two things and it being anything to do with the Harry Potter universe, I was certainly... You were on board. I was already on board. I just didn't understand what they were going to do. So this trailer still doesn't tell you what the movie's really about. Yeah, it doesn't give us a plot. Right, there's no plot. So I don't know who the villain is. I don't know what the what what's at hand. I mean, it, but it looks exciting now. Like, I am super excited now. I mean, it looks like you see... A glimpse of the Ministry of Magic, or I was probably not called that in the U.S., but the U.S. version of that. It's something called different. I know it's something. Yeah, because I mean, in in England, they have their their government is the Ministry. That's Mm -hmm. why it's the Ministry of Magic. So in the U.S., I'm not sure what ours would be. The Congress of Cauldron. (laughs) I doubt it. No, no. Anyway, but it looks like you get a taste of kind of their the American version of Diagon Alley. You get a an American version of whatever their government is. Like, I mean, there's definitely some kind of fighting going on. And I don't and know who, um, what's his face plays, the... Oh, Colin Farrell? Colin F- F- Farrell. Yeah, but he looks like he's a bad guy. Could be. He Maybe could not, but he kind of has a look on his face like he's a bad guy. Yeah. You know, so I don't know. Like, just because he's dressed in black, okay? No, he, well, that's, that's, I'm just saying, he kind of has a look. But it just, I don't know, you, you got enough taste of what... I'm super excited for this now, and like I said, I, I was, I mean, I was already, I was already was, on board, were, but I wasn't excited. excited. I'm excited now. I cannot wait okay. to see this film. So yeah, I like the trailer too. Um, I still wish we were to get a little more plot, but it doesn't come out till November, so there's plenty of time to give us another trailer, or probably two more trailers uh, until that point. I liked, the main thing I liked about this trailer was the fact that you got to see the wizarding stuff. You got to see them 
what is it where they disappear apparating, apparating and, and they you know flash their wands at each other and you see uh newt uh, go into his suitcase you know lord knows where he's going mm -hmm. You see all the magic stuff, really. Yeah, even just that, like little touch where he like sets his suitcase to Muggle ready. Yes, you know, like, that was cool. Just yeah. little things like that. That I, the fact that J.K. Rowling is writing this. I mean, like I said, I wasn't worried because everything she writes that has to do with Harry Potter's universe is amazing. Uh -huh. um, I did think it was kind of strange in a way that they kind of they had to like bring Albus's name, you know, Dumbledore's well, name. Well, see, into I it. think that's kind of what it is because. That was your first indicator that you're in the Harry and Potter that world. That you're in the same because right. because there are two names. You could either bring up Harry Potter or Dumbledore. But you can't bring up Harry Potter. He's not born. Exactly. Yet. So the only character who's alive at this point that the general audience knows it's is linked to is yeah. Dumbledore. So yeah. it's that. It almost just seemed kind of like like product placement. You know, could, like they were like. And it is. I know because they want is. you to know it's Harry Potter's world. It's the same yeah. world. It's kind of like how we were expecting a Darth Vader drop in Rogue One trailer. Well, we're getting to that one. I next. know. I'm just saying, it's the same kind of thing. Exactly. But this you. one actually did the Dumbledore name. Exactly. Drop, yeah, they actually Rogue did the name did drop. Not. Exactly. So, but yeah, I think it looks good. I'm looking forward to see more of it. I think. Uh, just a couple notes I had. Uh, of course, we mentioned Dumbledore. We mentioned the Muggle-worthy little, um, uh, I want to say, selection on his briefcase. And then, of course, we mentioned him going into the briefcase. Um, so really, the only two of things I had was um, Colin Farrell's character saying, no human can do what this thing is capable of. I'm very curious. Is that... Is that kind of saying it's probably some kind of some, creature yeah though. that's what i'm saying some yeah. kind of because he said thing and not person mm -hmm. so i imagine it's something that newt is either has with him or maybe has found perhaps or that they discover and then they're gonna he's they need, gonna they, help need them. they need newt to take it down yeah. because he's an expert on mm -hmm. what is it fantastic beast fantastic beast well, there's, a, there's a specific name for it. what is it her you know zoologist or what do we call them in the magic world i don't know oh, there's a specific name for a magic zoologist yeah what, what was um what was, um, gosh, I'm, I'm blanking on names here. The giant from Harry Potter. Hagrid. He Hagrid. was nothing. He what, just what, liked crazy what, what beasts. Was he, he, what was his, he taught a class. What was the class? Care of Magical Creatures. Okay, well, fine. We'll call it that. <laughs> anyway, he's, he's good I'm at magical I'm pretty sure creatures. they call him a magizoologist okay. when they refer yes, to him. Yes, that was it. I think that's what it was. Yeah, but anyway. Anyway, okay. And then the other one I have was just at the beginning of it. Um, they had that uh, Newt was kicked out of Hogwarts. Mm -hmm. And of course, Dumbledore not being a the um, head the head of head yeah head of Dumbled of Hogwarts, but just being a teacher, of course, means you know what it's set pretty far back because he's not the head of it; he's just a teacher at that point. Mm -hmm. Like it's, when Voldemort was there, could be quite possibly. I think um, this is a little further back than that. I think it is. I mean, it's what like looks like what I think forties, thirties. I was thinking like twenties or. I don't know. Something. Well, I forget. I. Not quite sure, the but... The fashion looked like the 20s. Yeah, too. yeah. Um, but yeah, I think it'll be exciting. i um, curious to see exactly said he got kicked out of Hogwarts. I wonder what he kicked out for. Don't know? Don't know. Either way, we'll find... Well, they said it was because of a beast. He had some kind of creature. Oh, okay. Yeah, see? So very similar to Hagrid. Uh, yeah, as I was saying, he's like a uh, he's like a smaller, you know, better looking version of Hagrid. Better educated. Maybe, perhaps. But we'll go... We'll wait and not, see in November. Not maybe, actually. Except Act he still got... Actually. So he still got expelled. <laughs> All right. So moving on to the main trailer we're going to talk about, uh, which was last week. The first teaser trailer was dropped for Rogue One, a Star Wars story. Now, this one, of course, is set before the events of the original Star Wars film, A New Hope, and is the first standalone anthology film in the franchise. And in it, we have actress Felicity Jones plays Jin, who is a rebel who is put in charge of... Finding out more about the Empire's new weapon, which of course we all know to be the Death Star. And uh, Mon Motha tasks her with finding out about it and possibly finding out some weaknesses uh, in it as well. This trailer uh, was pretty awesome actually. Uh, Gareth Edwards, who directed both Godzilla and the film Monsters, um, is going to be behind it. And along with Felicity Jones, you got Mads Mikkelsen, Donnie Yen, Forrest Whitaker, Diego Luna... And a whole bunch of more people in this film. And it comes out December 16th. I got psyched for it. It was really cool. Yeah, yeah, it looked really good. I'm excited. If I had to put this first teaser against the first teaser from episode 7. Oh, this one was better. Yeah. Yeah. I would say, yeah. Because you got so little. I mean, in all the episode 7 trailers, trailers yeah. you got so little, I felt like. 
But this one, just you know, just based off the first one, going against the first one, yeah, the Force Awakens teaser was Star Wars is back, but you didn't have to do it in this trailer. You, this was you had to. I think the thing is, this one has to establish that it's not a continuation of Episode Seven of not a Force Awakens. That it's going back, and that's why I think you had to go back and you had to show the the, the Death Star being built and stuff like that. Well, and it helps too that the lady playing Mon Mothma looks exactly like so, the lady who played Mon Mothma. Glad you got into that. That was one of my things. So what most people don't know is that is the same lady who played Mon Mothma in Episode Three, Revenge of the Sith. But most people don't know that because those scenes were actually deleted from the film and they're in the special features. So that's really irrelevant to what I just said. Well, yeah. Well, they, they chose her back in ep during yeah. episode three. Who is she? Is huh? she, I, I mean... Don't, I don't know the actress's name, but yeah, she looks a lot like her. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, they chose her back in episode three because there's a whole other storyline in Revenge of the Sith where Padme and Bail Organa, played by Jimmy Smith, uh, start to kind of form the rebellion a little bit. And they took that whole storyline out of it. Why, I don't know, because that just gave Padme nothing to do the entire movie except for cry and be pregnant. But mm -hmm. that's beside the point, was that uh, when I saw her in there, I'm like, oh, wow, that's cool that you know they got the same actress back. Even though most people don't know who she is, fanboys like myself know who she is, and I'm really happy that they brought her back for it, too. I just think it's awesome that she looks like the lady from the first one. <laughs> well, come on. It's, it's a lady. You give her short red hair. I mean, I don't know, they're going to look similar. I think that that was kind of another way people who have seen the original trilogy could kind of realize, oh, wait, this is back here, that that lady was in that first one. Yeah, of course. You know, and, like, of course, they, ha they had the, that when she was talking to Mon Mothma, or Jin was talking to Mon Mothma, they, they were in that room where... Leia sat there during the attack on the Death Star. In mm -hmm. that first film, you had the glowing screens that were like exactly the same, the little mm -hmm. table, all that stuff. You, they were all in Yavin 4, mm -hmm. I, is what it looked like to me. So again, it's that callback to everything that was in the original Star mm -hmm. Wars film to just let you know that, hey, this is going back. This is not Episode 8, mm -hmm. which I thought was well, really cool. And I think it kind of fits really well with the releasing the first anthology film as... Rogue One, because right now a lot of the the literature that's coming out, you know, has to do kind of with that same time period, like mm -hmm. the Claudia Stars, the, the, the Claudia Lost Gray, Lost Stars. Lost yeah. Stars. You know, that, that book takes place mm -hmm. during the destruction of the Death Star, but it's like from the Imperial side of the story. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's some other um, bits and pieces that of things I've been reading where it... Was Tarkin? Yeah, you know, Tarkin, I yeah, Tarkin, I mean, well, Tarkin, that whole thing took place while he was helped building the Death yeah. Star. So that was even before mm -hmm. that was the, 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 the things that happened in Lost Stars. But, um, so it's just interesting, too, with all those, those books kind of out right now and people... Yeah, and even the comics right now, like mm -hmm. Star Wars and the Darth Vader comic, they're all taking place in that time frame, too. Yeah, so it's nice that anybody who has been doing some of the extra reading with the new canon stuff that's come out right now, it's mm -hmm. going to fit right into this new anthology mm -hmm. film. So I'm, I'm pretty excited about it. I mm -hmm. think it's going to be really good. So after we get to talk about the trailer, before we move on to the next piece, I want to get some some Star Wars talk with you and your whole book reading thing. So <laughs> we're going to talk a little bit of that after we talk more about... So going back to this trailer... Technically, I've been listening to them on Audible. Either way, you, you've been engul engulfed in them, which is awesome, I think. So, <laughs> the beginning of the trailer and the end of the trailer, I liked how they played that, the Force theme, like the Jedi theme, but it was like a piano solo. Mm -hmm. I mean, that just gave me chills who's, right there. Who's doing the music? Do you know? I don't, I don't know. I'm sure they've named it already, but I know it's not John Williams, mm -hmm. unfortunately. But it had to happen eventually. So, we just have to accept it and move on and realize that Star Wars might, from now on, not have John Williams. But it's still going to sound very similar, I'm sure. Just won't have his name on it. Uh, going back, uh, the character of Diego Luna, the guy with the mustache that was in the trailer. Um, to me, the thing that stood out to me was I looked at his jacket. His jacket looked like that navy jacket that Han Solo wore in Empire Strikes Back. Did you see that jacket? I didn't notice it, no. Didn't notice the jacket. See, this is what I'm working with here, people. But <laughs> they, that really, that's the thing that stood out for me with that character. Um, other than that, okay, He's in it. I mean, he looks like from the trailer, he's with Jin mm -hmm. a lot. So I'm sure he'll be a main part of it. Maybe even the love interest, maybe? I don't know. Maybe. Do you 
really think these movies even need a love interest? They don't need them, that's true, but I'm just saying. It happened. It's a movie. Why does there have to always be a love interest? There doesn't interest? have to be. I'm just saying okay. it could happen, okay? Probably just some friendly romantic banter. Could be. Like, uh, um, Okay. And then Jen, of course, has that scene where um, she's scrapping with some stormtroopers, it looks like, and being able to hold her own. So this is a girl who, you know, they listed off all the things that she's done wrong, like, you know, embezzlement and forging imperial documents and all that other stuff. And uh, then she throws out the stormtroopers. This, this seems like a girl who can definitely hold her own and to kick a little ass. Mm -hmm. And now Star Wars has lots of really awesome women. Well, that's what I was saying, too, because as soon as I saw this, too, I was talking to Josh about it. I'm like, so this is the next Star Wars movie we have in this new canon. And again, we have a female protagonist. Do you think maybe, just playing devil's advocate a little bit, that Lucasfilm is trying to... I don't know, make up or try to play with the fact that a lot of people thought Star Wars was just for boys? I don't know. I think it's just a woman in charge there now. <laughs> That's true. We do have George Kathleen. isn't running the show anymore. Kathleen Kennedy Kathleen is running Kennedy's running the show. in charge now. And That's true. And so the era of it being all about men. And, I mean, Leo could hold her own back in the day. That's but true. But she was like the only one. Yeah, she's the only woman, I think, in that. Aside from Aunt Beru, it was her... And Leia in the first Star Wars movie. Yeah, exactly. And that was it. So now we're getting a lot of really... I mean, we're, it's not like there's no strong male characters either. There's, I mean, no. I mean, look at... I mean, The Force Awakens. I mean, Poe is awesome. Yeah, Finn but do you is think, awesome. Do you think Ray is For like, all, all yeah. those years of Star Wars where, yeah. again, they thought it was a, a, as a guy's game, do you think they're trying to make up for that now with all these lead females? I don't know. I think they're just trying to balance it a little bit. I, I don't I'm think it's totally like a okay making up it. for it. I think it's just a balance. There's... I mean, if you look at the general population, it's half women. So why would your movies not have, you know what I mean? Like equal part. Uh -huh. You know, they're saying he's even like women stormtroopers now. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I mm -hmm. think that's important. That's true. Yes. Uh, I, I don't know. I'm not going to go further than that. Okay. We'll just move on from there. Uh, let's see, or something else. Uh, we see the Death Star being built. See, like, the actual dish being put in, which I thought was, that was cool. Uh, another cool thing, the alarm sound. The woo, I woo, thought that was a little annoying. Woo. It kind of got... What? Oh, my God. I had a total flashback. I was like, yes! Yeah. I was like, that was so awesome, you know? Because that's what you heard in the original Star Wars film. Yeah, no, I thought again, it was cool. It was just it's, a little It's overkill. another callback to that first film because... You know, it, it along with having, you know, in being in Yavin 4 and having the Death Star there, those are things we associate with that first film. And that noise, mm -hmm. which you heard in the first film, that's another callback. Mm -hmm. You know, you hear that noise, you immediately go back to that scene where the Death Star is being attacked. and Or I guess it was it was in Return of the Jedi 2 when the Death Star was being about to be blown up as well. The but it's still just a callback to that mm -hmm. time period, yeah. which I thought was cool. Mm -hmm. I like that. Uh, the Grand Admiral. Mm -hmm. I thought he looked badass. He was pretty cool. Of course, people are, are waiting for Thrawn to show up in this new canon. Um, I don't think we're going to get Thrawn. Like they said, they're going to play off what is now considered Legends. They're going to cherry pick from it. And they could, you know, call it other stuff. For instance, we got, uh, in The Force Awakens, we got the son of Han and Leia, but unlike Legends, his name wasn't Jason, his name was Ben. So I think we're going to get similar characters that are going to be called something different, and I feel like uh, Ben Middleson's character is kind of, could possibly be that, where he's a Grand Admiral, and he might be very th similar to Thrawn, where he's very strategic, but I don't think he's going to have the blue skin, obviously, from the trailer, and I don't think he's going to be called Thrawn, I think he's going to be called something different. I haven't read that bit yet. It's in my queue. Yes, yes. Well, uh, uh, the other day, Lisa was asking me what Star Wars book she could she should listen to next, and one of her uh, suggestion was *Heir to the Empire*, which of course is a classic Star Wars novel. Uh, but there are so many other good ones out there. That uh, what did I tell I you? Chose, to choose? I chose that. Chose Darth Plagueis instead. Darth Plagueis, yes, which is another good one. So, but eventually you get to the *Heir to the Empire* mm -hmm. or the Thrawn trilogy, and I think you'll enjoy it as well. So. Uh, let's see, what else I got on my list here? Uh, the Donnie Yen character, kicking a little butt. I don't, what, what, do, what do you think he's gonna be? You think he's a good guy, bad guy? Like, oh, he's part training of the, he's, he's the part rebels? Of the team. He's part of the team, like, in that group photo they had with Felicity Jones and all the other people, he's in that photo, mm -hmm. so I think he's part of the team like, that's Like, with training, her, like training, yeah. like, like a combat training type thing or something. No, I mean, he's, I think he just ran into Stormtroopers and he's kicking some butt. Hmm. I think that's what it is. It's all it is, actually. And speaking of stormtroopers, did you see all the different outfits they had in this one? Mm -hmm. They had like 
black outfits. I saw gold outfits. I saw many different colors, mm -hmm. many different divisions. I'm sure they all have a different job. I think it'd be cool again just to see because I think in the original trilogy we just got that little blanket of mm -hmm. stormtroopers. We had snow. We had stormtroopers in the original film. Then in Empire Strikes Back, we were introduced to snow troopers. Then we were introduced in Return of the Jedi to scout troopers. So this is you know there are several divisions, several ranks of stormtroopers. And that's again, that's something I want to expand the universe a little bit, get to see a little bit more of it. I think it'd be something really cool to see. Uh, okay, so the one scene that you and I have been talking about, uh, the scene with the dark cloaked figure mm -hmm. with the red Imperial Guards yeah. next to him, and it looks like, I, to me, that looked like some kind of chamber or whatever that was holding somebody. But it was in like, it. yeah, it was like a power. It looked like it had like some kind of like, like a beam. I don't know. Yeah, it was either a beam. I felt like, you know, because in um, Empire Strikes Back, Luke, after he. As uh, Han saves him on Hoth, he's in that little tube, like regenerating. Yeah, but this they thing call had, it a bantha tank. Yeah, but this thing didn't look like that. It didn't. It wasn't like a translucent water tank. This thing looked like power, like energy. It looked to me like like a beam me up, Scotty type thing. Wrong franchise. I know that. I'm just <laughs> saying that's what it looks like. It looks like like some kind of power or like electricity or some kind of energy field. Okay, maybe the emperor is about to charge up or something. I don't know. I don't know. But yeah, but I mean the red. I mean those were definitely the imperial the, guards. Exactly. So, so the emperor is somewhere, somewhere nearby. Yeah. Exactly. Now who that was? Some people are saying maybe that was Darth Vader. Some people are saying that was the emperor. I don't know who it was. It was a bad guy of some kind. How about this? Just as just to say this. Do you think we're going to get any tidbit or any cameo or anything in this film about Snoke? In his possible true identity. No. No? Not at all? Nothing even? No. Nothing? They're not like trying to play it off like no. kind of Marvel we did with Thanos where you just saw a brief glimpse of him? No, I don't no? think so. You're just really like, no, no, nope. no, 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 huh? No. Okay, fine, fine. I try to, I try to pull it in, but I guess you're just all against it. Nope. That'd be fine. All right. Uh, Forrest Whitaker. Looking kind of like a crazy old man, I think, in this I one. Know. Like an old junker. He's doing that voiceover. But he looked, uh, I'm not sure what role he's going to play in it all. I don't know. He looked kind of weird. But it's Forrest Whisker, so I'm sure he'll... It's Forrest Whisker? Whatever. <laughs> Something like that. I'm doing my best here, okay? <laughs> I'm doing my best. But I'm sure Forrest Whitaker will do great because he always does great. The walker scene was pretty cool. I like that because yeah. it, it's very reminiscent of like kind of like a video game, the Battlefront games, where you're out as a soldier on the field and you got, you know laser beams flying everywhere and then you got walkers firing at you and that'll be cool it's very interesting to see how they're going to try to take down the walkers like on foot because in empire strikes back you had the walkers and you know luke did a thing where he wrapped around them well luke didn't do it it was wedge that did it he wrapped around him and the walker fell and then luke got his lightsaber and cut one open and threw a bomb in there so it's interesting to see how someone else is going to try to take one of those things down without a a lightsaber or a ship to do so. Mm -hmm. That'd be cool. But they look cool. The effects look cool. Of course, yeah, the you know, look in really the Empire cool. and Return of the Jedi, they were models and, you know, they looked cool, but they were kind of slow. This, you could tell they were, they stepped up their game mm -hmm. on this one. Well, it has been like 30 years, 40 Quite years, a long time, 50 right? 50 years. How long has it been? Is it that, was, that was late 70s. 1980 was, was Empire been Strikes like 40 Back. Years. So, yeah, exactly. So. All right, so last thing I had on my list was the very final shot of Felicity Jones in a TIE fighter pilot outfit. People are saying, oh, does she go bad? No. I'm not believing that at all. I think she's in the Death Star or, you know, trying to infiltrate. Like her way out. Well, she's trying to, exactly. Yeah. She's trying to infiltrate the enemy, so she's got to blend in. No different than when Han or Luke, you know, put, a, put on Stormtrooper oh, outfits to try to, you know, briskly walk through the Death Star without being noticed. Mm -hmm. That's just how it is, you know? And of course, as we know, if she walked around without her helmet on, people would say, oh, it's a woman in the Empire. That's not right. That's not true. There's women in the Empire. When? You just don't... We, we didn't get them in the movies, but I'm saying the books now are showing you that there uh, were. okay. I mean, like, like, for instance, in Lost Stars, that's about a woman and a man in the... Who are, yeah, I got you. Who are in the Empire. Like, they're like... You know, moving up the ranks of the of the Imperial Navy. I think it's all it's all called the Imperial Navy. Basically, mm -hmm. the, the ships. It's the Imperial Navy. But there's women. There's a lot of women. They just weren't in the films because it was the 70s. 
I and retract my statement. All right. Anyway, so we're going to take a break before we move on to the Suicide Squad trailer because Miss Lisa here has been uh, divulging in quite a bit of Star Wars. She's She's got divulging. This, divulging? I've been delving into, perhaps? In, or let's see. See what I have to live with? I swear. <laughs> anyway, she's uh, been listening to the audiobooks on Audible, and she's gone through quite a few of them right now, actually, and I can be prouder because... It wasn't that long ago where she was just the casual Star Wars fan, where she just watched the movies. But now she's reading comic books. She's I'm reading, reading the novels. Reading, more. reading the novels. She's watching Rebels with me. I mean, she's she's in it. I mean, she's deep deep in it with me. I'm just I think I'm pretty much she's doing more than I am at this point. I think um, so. She's in it. So I want to talk to you kind of about the audiobooks that you've been listening to. Because um, I know you've gone through a couple of them right now. Which ones are have been your favorite? Um, so my least favorite that I've listened to so far is Lords of the Sith. Mm. I was bored by that one. I, I mean, not by the whole thing. I, I mean, I enjoyed parts of it. I just felt like the Emperor and the Vader storyline was cool. I mean, yeah. it kind of gave you a little bit of an insight into their dynamic. You yeah. know, how the Emperor was basically always testing. Always playing him. Always, always playing testing him. him. and Always trying to, basically, he was always fucking with him. He always. was. Oh, always. And how, you know, like, Anakin or Vader or whatever could never, he every time, he, he couldn't answer any question without trying to figure out what the Emperor was playing at. Uh -huh. But he was so devoted still, uh -huh. which it was just weird. It was weird. Um, but that, that book was was interesting, too, in that it kind of showed um, the beginning of kind of where the rebellion got started. Yeah. Um, you know, because it, it was with the, with the Twi'leks and mm -hmm. with, you know, Hera, who's on Rebels. It was her dad. Uh -huh. And so that it was interesting. I just felt like some of the action, some of the scenes went on for too long. And yeah. I, I mean, honestly, that. when I read it, I focused more on the Vader Emperor mm -hmm. part, which really made me enjoy mm -hmm. the book quite a bit. Yeah. And, and again, the psycholo psychological game that the Emperor mm -hmm. played with yeah. Vader and you get inside Vader's head and the end And with of, everyone. And with the, everyone. And the end of that book. I don't know, do you want to spoil the end of it for people? Like what No, no, no. Don't okay, spoil we'll it. spoil it, but the end of it was just like, wow, like mm -hmm. Anakin, there is no Anakin anymore. There, no, there is just yeah. the Vader and he's devoted to the dark side. Yeah. That's what it is. But so that was my least favorite one so far. What's been um, your favorite? My favorite one so far I think has probably been I don't know, I don't know if I have that. I really, really loved um, the other, th I've read three other ones right now. Recently, I read um, Claudia Gray's Lost Stars, mm -hmm. and I really loved that one. And I couldn't get through um, that one. I really loved that one. It was too young adult for me. I mean, it is. It, it, it's it's a young adult, so it has like a love story, and you know, it's basically about you know, kind of like star-crossed lovers, whatever. But it, it was interesting. It was really interesting because it showed you what was happening in. It was kind of the imperial side of things. You know, it's about yeah. two two kids who grew up on a planet out in the outer rim. And they want to fly ships. They uh, they want to join the Imperial Navy well, because they want to be doesn't everyone? Pilots. I mean, come on, Luke wanted to join them too. Right. So, but it's about these two who have been kids from the beginning. They kind of came. They grew up on the wrong side of the tracks from each other on their home planet. Mm -hmm. Yes. But they kind of against the odds. They they stayed friends. They joined the Imperial Navy together. They. And it's just kind of about their. And then after once they get out of the academy. It's just about how their lives diverge. One is very stays with the Imperial, and one of them realizes that the Empire is a bunch of jackasses, and he kind of offshoots <laughs> and joins the rebellion. Gotcha. And so it's just about how they can yeah. love each other. But but it, the best part what I thought was cool about it was how it takes place literally during the yeah, destruction the original of the trilogy, Empire. Yeah. So I mean, of the Death Star. So you're 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 witnessing and, these people watching their friends die on the Death Star, uh -huh. and so. It's just kind of like, from their point of view, how they think that the rebels are so reckless because they've killed all these people without any cause, and because uh, there was, I mean, the Death Star was basically a planet. It had yeah, millions of people. That's on no it. moon. It's a space station. Right. Exactly. So I mean, that one was really interesting um, in, in that respect. Um, but then I also really liked. Um, was it a New Dawn? That's the one. That's that takes, the one with the Kanan, one about and, Kanan Hera. and Hera. Yeah, that, that's a, like that's a prequel to Rebels. To Rebels, it's, it's basically the story of how Kanan and Hera met. Yeah, exactly. But it also has a lot of other information about the Empire, about uh -huh. how it works, and that one I really thought was interesting too. But I really think Tarkin is probably my favorite one yeah. so far. I really liked Tarkin. Um, it was just—I mean, it was all about him, just about uh -huh. his life. Yeah. Um, but then there was kind of like a—it had a lot of backstory, like where he would talk about his 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 childhood and like yeah. what made him who he was, 
but there was also a lot of interaction with him and Vader because they were on a mission together. Uh -huh. um, and what I thought was the coolest thing about Tarkin is that he knew Vader was Anakin. Yeah. And I don't think anybody else in the Empire knew no. that. And he didn't know because the Emperor told him. He figured it out, which I thought He's was really cool. Cookie. because It just kind of really showed you... Because, you know, the, the only thing you know about Tarkin from the films is... Him on the Death Star, yeah. you know, fucking with Leia. He's just high, high up in the ranks. Right, right, but now. you don't know anything about him besides that little taste. And, and you can see in that film that he can kind of put Vader in his place sometimes. He does. Like, he's like, Vader, release him. Yeah, yeah. and Vader listens to yeah. him. And so this kind of helps you understand their relationship and where their positions were within the Empire and to the Emperor. Um, but it really gave you a lot. It was a lot of interesting story about just about Tarkin's past. Mm -hmm. And and the way Tarkin thinks and the way that he became such a gifted, you know, like military man, you know, the way he thinks and the way he go he gets things done, it, it was really interesting. I'm I'm excited to keep going on now with so Darth Plagueis is next and of course, see now you're venturing out to more of the non-canon stuff. This is all the legend stuff that isn't mm -hmm. really in you know I know account. But, I know but Plagueis. There's still good stories. There's mm -hmm. still good stories. Yeah. Like I said, anything by James Luceno, I mm -hmm. usually has been my Tar favorite. Is Tar Tarkin canon? Yeah, Tarkin's okay, canon. Okay, Tarkin's canon. Yeah, like, A New right. Dawn is what started the first official thing mm -hmm. of the new canon was A New Dawn. Mm -hmm. So, Tarkin, Lost Stars. All the ones I've read so yeah, far. Yeah, so all so far have yeah. been canon. Now, the Plagueis is Darth not. Plagueis is not. It sh should be, though, because it's so great, but mm -hmm. it's not. But um, I'm excited to see what you think as you continue on reading mm -hmm. the Star Wars. Yeah, and then now Claudia Gray has a new one coming out called Bloodline, which yes. I'm really excited I'm excited about. to read that one, that one, too. I'm so. very anxious to see how that one is. I don't know. I might... You need to go back and try to read Lost Stars. I don't know. I really maybe, think that if you actually maybe. gave it a chance... Well, because I think I got... That's the thing. The boring part was all the setup. I got to the point where the Death Star got blown up, mm -hmm. and I thought that was kind of cool, but by then I was so sick of the characters and all their melodramatic drama that was just like... But I feel like, so I feel like I kind of left it right as it was getting good, honestly. Yeah, you should give so it another chance. I, I might try. I don't know. We'll see. Mm -hmm. We'll go from there. Okay, so um, jumping off of Star Wars, and let's jump over to the Suicide Squad trailer. That dropped last night as well. Uh, we literally went on YouTube to rewatch the Fantastic Beast trailer, and oh, Suicide Squad trailer's up too, so I had to watch that as well. I've watched it a couple times. Lisa just watched it twice a little while ago. What do you think? Are you more excited um, for it? Yeah, I mean, I think it looks cool. Uh, I don't really understand. I, mean, I don't know any of these characters besides the Joker, so I don't really know exactly what to expect about it. But um, I think it looks really cool. I think it looks better than Batman v Superman. See, I wasn't sure, too, um, where it took place in the timeline. But then that very first part there where they're all sitting around and talking about what if Superman would have come and ripped off the roof of the White House and taken the president, who could have stopped them? Like, using the past tense, like, Superman's dead. Spoiler alert, Superman dies in Batman v Superman. Sorry if I spoil it for you. So I feel like it takes place after those events, although I heard it might take place before. This kind of, for me, solidifies that it takes place after the events of Batman v Superman, in my opinion. I don't, I don't know. I mean, it could be... Well, because he's talking to Superman like Superman's not there anymore. I don't know. I don't know. I, didn't, I guess I didn't get that, but I didn't really... I was, there's Just a lot of things for me you know, to try to... Could, would, it. these are past tense in, you know, verbal language. Yeah, but it could that could just mean there was some big thing that happened last week. What if he, he could have done this then? Does that yeah. mean he's gone forever? Okay. And he's not anyway. And I don't think he's going to be gone long anyway, well, so... But, well, Warner Brothers wants you to think that, even though they think anyway. we're a bunch of idiots. I don't know when it is in the timeline, so okay. I don't... All right, so then we go on. Uh, so this one, of course... Had some more music to it. The last trailer had Bohemian Rhapsody playing the entire time. Uh, this one, you got two songs. Uh, one of them, the You Don't Own Me. Is that the name of it? Yeah, it's by Leslie Gore. By Leslie Gore. And then we also heard uh, Ballroom Blitz. I don't know who originally did that song. They're both alternate versions of the song. But those are the two songs we heard. And I liked them both. I didn't like how they switched off, though. I yeah, like I thought that... that I, want, yeah. I wanted one song throughout the entire trailer. Mm -hmm. Like, because last time we got... Bohemian Rhapsody throughout the entire thing. And the fact that it switched uh, in the middle of the trailer, I didn't like it. I like both songs. I would have loved both songs to be in, you know, gone through the entire trailer. So the fact that they switched off. 
I thought the you don't own me one was really good. Like exactly, because they're villains who yeah. are being asked to do something that's in the tone that they put. Yeah, with exactly, it. It's exactly. They're being they're... forced to do something, so it's like you don't own me. You know, I'm doing this, but you don't, you know, own who yeah. I am. I felt like, it was but Ballroom Blitz. I mean, mm -hmm. that seemed pretty appropriate for what we saw as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but that was cool. I mean, the trailer itself, like I said, just got me more and more excited for the film. I said on Twitter, I'm officially more excited for this film than I am for or was for Batman v Superman because again I think it's going to be a better film not just based on the director I think David Ayer is a better director than Zack Snyder so I trust him more I think it fits better too Snyder. with the tone that DC is trying that these characters fit better yeah. with the tone that DC is trying to hit so I think it, so, it, it lends itself better so there was this, a, a story a little while ago uh, okay Entertainment Weekly talked to Jai Courtney who plays Captain Boomerang and he was addressing kind of uh, what they were saying about the uh, reshoots and the response to Batman v Superman, trying to give it more jokes and stuff like that. So Jai Courtney spoke with Entertainment Weekly saying that, yeah, they are doing reshoots, but it has nothing to do with making it more funny. He said, quote, I think there's plenty of that in it. I would say we're going back to make, I wouldn't say we're going back to make it funnier. There's some additional action stuff we've been doing, which is pretty dope. We're just kind of adding in that sense. Don't believe everything you read. Which, in this day and age, reshoots for a film yeah, are not totally uncommon. Standard. This makes way more sense than them going back to try to make it funny. Especially going back to, you know, correct or maybe improve on some of the action sequences. Because it looks like a he very heavy action film as well. And I feel like just from this trailer alone, we're going to get a lot more character development and in-depth uh, character analysis than we ever got in Batman v Superman. I think these characters are going to be a little more enjoyable. Yeah, they're villains, but I feel like I'm going to relate to them and like them more than I did anyone in Dawn of Justice. But, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, so coming to some of the notes I had, a um, couple of scenes we saw. Uh, first off, I think Margot Robbie as Harley Quinn is going to kill it. Yeah, I think she I looks think really she cool. I think she is going to be phenomenal in it. And this, the parts in this trailer where she, wa where she was in it, uh, there was one scene where she was getting dressed and you saw all the guys watching her. She's like, what? And then everyone starts mm -hmm. moving around. Did you see the tattoo on her abdomen, too? Uh -uh. It said, fuck you. Oh, did it? <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure. We'll have to wait and see. It was see. like right in, like, now, right, this, yeah. This is the PG-13 movie, so they got to keep it, you know. I think that's what it somewhat. said. I, maybe I misread it. I don't but, know. Mm -hmm. it'll, it'll be interesting if they keep it in there. Mm -hmm. uh, so then, then there's also the line where she's like, I'm prone to vaccine, just to let you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, you know, that got me laughing as well, too. And that was just great. And just Margo, I think she's going to add a lot of comedy. I think she is. Yeah. I mean, and that just goes to her. She's just such a great actress. I mean, first saw her, you know, in Wolf of Wall Street where she was phenomenal. And then I saw that small film she did with Chiwetel Ejiofor and uh, Chris Pine, Z for Zachariah. Mm -hmm. And she was really good in that. And it was a completely different character than what she was in Wolf of Wall Street. Now she's playing another completely different character from those two. So just to me, it just shows off that she can do pretty much anything. And I think she's got a bright future ahead of her, and I cannot wait to see her as Harley Quinn. Yeah, I think it's going to be good. I'm excited. Um, the introduction of the Joker. We had the little laugh, mm -hmm. and Harley's going, uh-oh. And then we see the Joker, Jared Leto, showing up in like that purple trench coat or something. Yeah, I don't know. As well. I, I, again, he, he looks more, I don't know, like a punk rock. He's putting his own stamp on mafia it. Mafia leader. I don't know. I, I guess it's got to be different from what Heath Ledger did and... Jack Nooks in before. I get it. And I'm not going to judge it. I'm going to, you know, wait and see how it is. It's it's Jared Leto. He's a good actor. I trust him. Again, I trust the director, David Ayer. Uh, we'll wait and see how it goes. Yeah, see how it fits with everything else that they're doing. I mean, it seems like everything has a very stylistic kind of look to it. So if his Joker fits with that, then I guess that's fine. Yeah, if it, if it fits the film, I think we're okay with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's just, um, you know, going back to, let's briefly mm -hmm. touch on mm -hmm. the villain of... Batman v Superman. Don't do it, don't do it. Jesse Eisenberg. Don't do it, Sean. Don't okay. do it. Okay, he didn't feel like he fit in the film. Mm -hmm. This one, I think this Joker is going to fit in the film and play off the characters. Yeah, we'll see. Better than uh, Lex Luthor did, I believe. So, uh, What else I got here? Do, 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 do. Batman. A lot more Batman in this, this trailer, I felt like. They showed him twice, I think, right? No, well, they had the one that we've seen before, which was him on the roof of the Joker's car. Mm -hmm. Then you had some kind of like... I feel like someone was hallucinating him because he had a Batman jumping, mm -hmm. but he had like a demon face. I went down and I slowed down the trailer and, you know, saw this stuff. So it was like, I think like somebody was hallucinating him. He saw the, the demon face on him. But then there's another one where he's jumping into the water as well. 
and you, you see him go in the water. And then there's another shot I saw just as I slowed it down, which it was him carrying, looked like Harley Quinn mm -hmm. to the Batmobile. Yeah, I saw that bit too. I didn't know who he was carrying, but it did. It, look it looked like, like Harley Quinn, I think. So it could be either a flashback, because it looked like uh, too. They're still going to show Harley's origin, because mm -hmm. there's part where like uh, she's falling, and then there's that one scene where um, the Joker from the the previous trailer he's got her like some chemicals or whatever he's kind of holding her a little bit i'm not sure but i feel like we're gonna get her origin in that mm -hmm. and maybe part of it was or maybe after sh having to throw down with the joker he's run off and he's left harley unconscious so batman picks her up carries her to the batmobile and then takes her to prison or wherever yeah, but I, I feel like batman is going to play a bigger part in this film than what we originally thought like instead of just one scene i think we might get Two or three scenes with him in yeah. it. Yeah, so it, lo it looks like it. Especially if the Joker's involved. The Joker's involved. You know he's there, want to take care of it because he knows he's the one that's got to take care of the Joker. Mm -hmm. That's what I believe. Uh, what do you think of Will Smith in it? I think I, you know, I love Will Smith. Well, you haven't loved him in a while though. That's well, the thing. I, I mean, I, I always love Will Smith. I just don't always. I'm not always interested in the films he's doing, but um, I think he he looks like he's playing his. The kind of His kind of character, he plays yeah, well. exactly. He's got to play Will Smith, is what yeah. it is. And the character of Deadshot isn't really a bad guy. I mean, he's a guy who kills people for money. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. that's just what he is. He's not someone out to kill people for the sake of killing people. And in previous trailers, we've seen it where he's got, he has a cut daughter, mm -hmm. of course. So I'm sure there's going to be that character. Um, motivation to want to see his daughter and protect his daughter and that's uh, again part of the character where he had a family at one point and i believe he lost them so he you know turned a little violent and turned a little evil but really he's not that bad of a character so i can see him being the main protagonist for this film yeah i mean like in relation to the rest of those people yeah the rest of them are just I mean, criminals yeah, like that in loves. relation to the real world He's a horrible person. He kills people for money. Yes, but the, he doesn't kill people for the fun of it. Right. Like, I'm saying in relation to the rest of these characters. Well, you know, some people guy. need to be killed. You know, whatever. whatever. Anyway, but yeah, I think um, he's gonna be fine in it. I don't. He's gonna. Hopefully, this will put him back in the limelight to where he can um, get back to the superstardom he once had. Um, although, do you ever know Patrick hates Will Smith like with a passion too? Why? My, my brother. I don't know. He just he doesn't like him at all. I don't know what it is. I mean, it's, I, mean I guess it's kind of the same reason I hate Sandra Bullock. Or the reason that I hate... Um, Russell Crowe. Russell Crowe. Yes, we all, have, <laughs> we all have someone. We all have someone we don't like, okay? Um, and then, okay, yeah, and then going off the Will Smith thing, the last thing I had here was uh, you want to see something where Will Smith was kind of antagonizing that one character yeah. to make him do the fire at the end. And then the bar scene at the end, I like that, where they're all yeah. like, give me a beer, give me whiskey, you know, what do you think? I'll just have a water. Yeah. That was pretty cool. But overall, a great trailer. Got me excited for the film coming out. I think it's going to be good. Um, I'm, not, I'm not thinking like opening night or anything, but definitely going to have to check that out within mm -hmm. the first few days. Yeah. That'll be good, good, too. All right, guys. So once we've knocked all that out, so now we're going to stick with Warner Brothers and the DC Cinematic Universe because last week, The Hollywood Reporter um, reported that the Wonder Woman film has been moved up two weeks. Mm -hmm. It's now going to come out on June 2nd, 2017. In addition to that, Warner's has also set uh, two untitled DC comic films for October 5th, 2018 and November 1st, 2019. Now, unrelated to that, um, Warner Brothers also has pushed back their own Jungle Book film, which is set to be directed by Andy Serkis, from October 6th, 2017 to October 19th. 2018. I really feel bad for Andy Serkis in this because, like... Exactly. This... Early, early review. So, Jungle Book, the John Favreau Disney film, comes out this weekend. And it looks awesome. It looks awesome. Everyone says it's awesome. And now Warner's is like, oh, crap. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I mean, I heard... I was just skimming the websites before we did this, and they're already talking sequel. Mm -hmm. Like, Disney's already, like, revving up for a sequel. Yeah, it Jungle looks Book like too. it's going to be really good. I'm really excited I'm, to I'm see it. I'm super excited to see it. We're definitely, what are you going to see? We both work this weekend, don't we? No, I'm off. Are you off? I'm, well, I'm working Sunday now. I traded. Anyway, this is a conversation we'll, we can have later. We'll find something else. <laughs> we'll, we'll see it at some point, definitely. But I'm excited for that. But, yeah, for that, I'm, 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 I feel bad for Andy Serkis pushing back a full year. Um, but, like, you know, they push it back to try to get people to forget 
that there was another Jungle Book movie, but then Disney revs up for another sequel. <laughs> I don't know. I can see this film completely falling apart. I don't apart. understand why they're trying to make a Jungle Book if Disney's making a Jungle Book right now. Like, why? Well, I think this one, I mean, they both wanted to make Jungle Book movies. I mean, it's like... Well, why? You know, films like to come out in pairs, you know? Yeah, but the same story... Doesn't make those, that doesn't make any they, sense. They, they have to find a way. I think a reason they're going to push it back, too. Andy Serkis said they pushed it back for it, you know, helping get the technology right and all that, which is, okay, I think a line of bull crap. I think, that, again, they're moving back to separate themselves more from this Jungle Book, which will probably, probably be quite a huge success. And, you know, just to try to maybe see if they can rewrite it and give it a different spin. Uh, maybe they tell it from Shere Khan's point of view or something like that. Yeah, I, don't I don't know. know. But, um, but then going back to the DC movies, so Warner Brothers moved up Wonder Woman, which is great. Um, two weeks. Two weeks, right. yes. But for me, it's like, eh, whatever. You know, I'm still on the fence about Wonder Woman. I think Gal Gadot did a okay job as Wonder Woman. I'm still not convinced she's the right person to lead the superhero female war cry i'm willing to give her a chance i'm giving her a chance i'm excited I'm just, to see this film i'm excited to see the possibility of the film um okay whatever i'll move on so then we have the other two dc untitled films october 5th 2018 november 1st 2019 i'm guessing one of these is the batman film i don't know it's okay, too far so out i got four possibilities you tell me okay i'm gonna go batman film suicide squad 2 Shazam film with The Rock, or Dwayne Johnson, and A Man of Steel 2. Out of those four, which two would you put in there? I honestly have no idea. It's too far but away. Number gotta, one, Suicide Squad hasn't come out yet. But people are so, liking what they're seeing. Well, yeah, but it's too early to tell if they're ready for a sequel for that one yet. And the whole thing with Batman v Superman, I think the tone of that lends more to a Batman standalone film than A Man of Steel 2. But if they can get a different director on board, then I think A Man of Steel 2 would be very good. Well, it was funny, too, because they also... I would like to see more Henry Cavill. They were talking about Henry Cavill about a possible Man of Steel 2, and he even admitted, him and Zack Snyder both admitted, that Warner Brothers didn't want to greenlight A Man of Steel 2 until they saw how Batman v Superman did. But the failure, or not necessarily the failure, whatever, the, no. the, the, the bad things about the film were not because... You know it, what it I mean? Bad, it wasn't yeah. yeah like so... And here's two. I heard, I read this online as well. So, um, according, I forget where I read it, somewhere else, but given the fact they spent so much money making Batman v Superman with production and marketing and all that, Warner Brothers is actually going to make more of a profit on Man of Steel than they will Batman v Superman because they spent less money on Man of Steel, actually. They spent way too much money publicizing Batman v mm -hmm. Superman. Like, it was a film people already wanted to see. Yeah, it was already an event film. Yeah. People were going to go see this film. You just had to put out a few commercials. But mm -hmm. they spent a lot of money on it, and that's why, again, they're not going to get as big a return as they'd like. So I'm still curious if it's going to break $1 billion, honestly. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, but yeah, so going back to the unknown dates, you got to think with Batman v Superman, despite what people say about the film, everyone enjoyed Ben Affleck as Batman. Mm -hmm. And you know what? As soon as that first weekend hit of that film and people were saying how good Ben Affleck was, they should have announced that Batman film right then and there. But it's, it has to go back to Warner Brothers being gun shy. Mm -hmm. They're so afraid of, you know, they're waiting for the reaction. Like I said, they were waiting for Batman v Superman to see if they want to do a Man of Steel 2. Mm -hmm. They, you know, pulled the plug on other projects and everything. Just, they, they're reactionary. Well, for good reason. I mean, they, they need to get rid of Zack Snyder. They need to do a lot of things. They need to rework their whole strategy is what they need to do. So, I mean, for good reason that they're a little gun-shy. But it's true. But that's the problem. They, they need to get the right people in place first. Mm -hmm. And they, I feel like they haven't done that. And it really... What makes... What hurts my heart, okay, <laughs> is that my favorite comic book writer, Jeff Johns, is now the chief creative officer over at DC. And he's got his name on all, all over this stuff. And I'm just like, Jeff, why? Why did you let this happen, Jeff? Why? And it hurts my heart. Mm. It really does. So, Jeff, I would like fix to it. see a Man of Steel too. I would just like to see one done right. Yeah, I know. I'd like to see a better Man of Steel, personally. But that's not because I really moment. like the, the. I really yeah, like, I like Henry Cavill. Yeah, and I, like, I like Amy Adams and as well. As and again, I want to go back to. I want to wait for the Blu-ray because mm -hmm. I feel like there's going to be 
30 minutes of stuff that is really going to help that film and make it better. I don't know if it's going to make it a phenomenal film, but I think it'll make it a better film and connect the dots better. Mm -hmm. And anything that's going to give the characters a little more depth, I feel like that's what's going to be in the three-hour Blu-ray cut. So I'm probably actually going to buy the Blu-ray. Mm -hmm. Despite how I feel about the theatrical version, I'm going to buy it because I feel like it's going to be better. So, and if it is better, I might have a little more hope for the Warner Brothers DC Universe. But we'll just have to wait and see how that goes. Because mm -hmm. all we have to go off right now is what we saw in theaters. Yeah. And while I didn't hate it, I didn't love it. It was, there's more than what, more possibility than what we were shown. So. All right, so you had no idea. Yeah, I see the time. I'm just reminding We're, we're wrapping up here. We're almost done. Okay. A couple more things to talk about. Okay. Um, so moving on, we're going to stop. jump over to Marvel just real quick here. We'll do this as the last story today, okay? Miss, 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 point out the time. Miss, we need to go get our child. Whatever. They don't close till 6. Yeah, I don't like to leave her there till 6. Anyway, uh, so Sony has registered several domain names. Um that have regards to Spider-Man. One of them is Spider-Man Homecoming the Movie, which they first um, registered. And then other ones are Spider-Man's Greatest Greatness Awaits Movie.com, Spider-Man Suspended Movie.com, and Spider-Man Coming of Age Movie.com. And all of these domains, if you try to go to them, redirect you to the Sony website. So a lot of people are saying that this could possibly be names for the upcoming Spider-Man solo film, which they are gearing up for. That comes out, uh, looks like next year you know, on July 7th. It's going to star on Tom Holland. Tom Holland, of course, going to be in Captain America Civil War coming out next month. And that'll be the first time we see this new Spider-Man. So what do you feel about these titles? <laughs> I, I don't know. I didn't love any of them. Wait, wait, let's go over them again. Spider-Man Homecoming. Spider-Man Coming of Age. Spider-Man Greatness Awaits. Spider-Man Suspended. I don't know. I don't really love any... Well, it depends. We don't really know where they're going with the Spider-Man character. To me... I mean, if they're going back to, like, high school Spider-Man, then, like, Homecoming well, they are. They are. kind of make sense, I, I guess. And to me, that makes the most sense. Spider-Man Coming of Age is... Is that's like lame. that's two on the money, really. I think you yeah. know it's like, hey, he's a teenager. Let's call it coming of age. You yeah. know, no, that's two on the money. Greatness awaits. I can kind of see that. Suspended. I kind of. Th it's interesting. I kind of play on words. Suspended. You know, like he's sus suspended. Suspended or homecoming is kind of my two favorites. Right now, I'm leaning towards homecoming because mm -hmm. it could be about an event that takes place during. Homecoming, okay. and he's trying to find a date for homecoming. Yeah, or but suspended could, like that. Be, could work too because it's like a really interesting play on words. Because he could be like actually suspended from school, or he could be suspended from the ceiling by his web. So it's kind of like one double of those entendre. Words. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, I got you. We could definitely. Um, I don't think any one of these is the actual name of it. Mm -hmm. I think Sony is just trying to uh, mess with us a little bit. But if it does, like I said, if it does end up. Becoming which so you you would go with suspended as your favorite. Sure. Okay. Cool. I got you. Because they say this one's gonna be again. He's back as a teenager. He's, you know, they would they would say it's more of a John Hughes feel to it, which I'm curious how they're gonna pull that off. But with Kevin Feige executive producing now, um, in Feige I trust. Mm -hmm. That's just how it goes. So we'll wait and see how that one develops. But Captain America: Civil War early screens are coming out right now and. People seem to like Spider-Man in it. They seem to like the movie. So this gets me more amped for the film. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to be great. I'm totally looking forward. Less than a month. We get to see it. This is, again, my number one movie I wanted to see this year. I think it will not be a letdown. I think it's going to be great. Yeah, I'm excited. You just have to remember to drink lots of coffee that day because the showing is at 1030, okay? That's what time we're going? 1030 p.m. Oh, my God. I asked you this. I asked you. I was like, hey, the, the movie's at 1030 at night. Do you want to come? You're like, hell yeah, I want to come. And so that's what it is. So the movie's probably not going to end until 12.30 or 1. Oh, my God. So, Miss, I go to bed at 10.30. <laughs> that's why I'm pre-warning you, drink some coffee, do what you have to do to stay engaged in the film, okay? I don't want it to be like one of those times where we go to a late movie and you fall asleep I, in the theater. I've only done that when it's been a subsequent viewing. I've never done that on the initial viewing of a film. But still, in my defense. If you're, if you're tired, it's going to distract you from the full 
engagement well, of the film. If I work that day, then I think it's inevitable. By 10.30 p.m., I'm going to be tired. Hence why I say coffee, coffee, coffee. I'm just saying. Okay, whatever. All right, guys. Well, that's going to be it for us today. Uh, if you have any questions or comments about what we've been talking about, hit us up, dayspringdiscussions at gmail.com. You can also hit us up on Twitter and on our Facebook group. I always like to post uh, some good stuff there. Some of the things we didn't get to today that I want to talk about is going to include the Game of Thrones trailer, uh, new Ninja Turtles trailer, as well as uh, the MTV Movie Awards giving us our first glimpse of Kong Skull Island. So we'll talk about that so you next just week. Have Josh on tomorrow? Huh? Tomorrow? No. Ooh, maybe <laughs> do a double show. I'm just saying. No, because you know I like to do a week. I do, I, do, I end it on Sunday. And then, you know, I do that whole week worth of I'm news. I'm just saying, you have a lot of news here. By next <coughs> week, you're going to have all the new news. And I don't have anything to say about any of the things you just mentioned. But so, Josh probably So would. maybe we'll get Josh on. If he, if he can show up for once and not cancel the last second, maybe we'll, we'll be able to work that out. Maybe I can take him out of the penalty box. Okay? All right, guys. So, again, hit us up if you have any questions, comments, or just want to talk about all things geek because that's what we like to do here. Uh, until next time, guys, may the Force be with us all.